In this video, I'm going to walk through my experience with my 6040 CNC router. I purchased this router off of eBay approximately three months ago, so I'm going to discuss some of the pros and cons, as well as some of the upgrades and changes that I've made to the system here to improve it. Now, just a little disclaimer before we get started here. I'm not uh, a CNC operator. I'm not a machinist. I'm a hobbyist, just like probably most of you are. If you notice anything incorrect, uh, something I miss, uh, an error I make, feel free to leave a comment below. I will certainly correct myself in the future. And this video is just strictly my opinion, you know, my experience using this router. Okay, so for the pros, the first pro, I would say, is the cost. I purchased this router three months ago, as I said, for $1,700 on eBay. For a machine this size, that's you can't beat that price anywhere. Um, it's solid aluminum, has a 1.5 kilowatt spindle, liquid cooled, uh, 24,000 RPM, NEMA 23 motors, comes with the cable tracks, comes with limit switches, all of the wires, the control box uh, with a VFD to control the spindle. It also comes with a pump. Uh, for pumping your coolant to cool the spindle. Uh, the coolant I'm using is just radiator fluid. It's anti-corrosion and you don't want the inside of your spindle rusting up. Now, having said that, so cost. Yeah, $1,700 for a machine this size. That's a great price. Another pro. This machine was basically ready to go out of the box. The table came in one box, the gantry, motors, spindle, and accessories, and the control box over there came in another box. All I had to do, this was all, all ready together, I had to put the spindle in, I had to put some bolts in here to bolt it to the table, uh, attach the motors, plug everything into the control box, and basically just plug it in and I was good to go. So that is great. Uh, it was very easy to set up. Another pro, it's rigid. So you can cut, you know, aluminum. You can cut MDF, maple, hardwoods, softwoods, plastic. You can cut a bunch of different materials with it. Another pro with this machine, it already came with the limit switches installed. Uh, that was a nice feature. As well, the, the spindle is very quiet. Now, I'm going to talk about some of the cons. My first con, the electronics in the control box. Well, yes, it did work out of the box. Uh, the machine was advertised to be able to do 4,000 millimeter a minute rapids. I could not get anywhere near 4,000 millimeters a minute out of the box. Now that's partially my fault. When I purchased this machine, I was told that it was a 220 volt only machine. So, not surprising when I get the control box out, it does say 220 volts. Um, indeed, the power supply inside is for 220 volts. So, I went ahead and plugged it into 120 volts just to see what happened. And, to my surprise, everything worked. You know, it was a 24 volt power supply and it was it was putting out 21 volts which is a bit weak but still, you know, it was functional. I could get about 1500 millimeter rapids on the y-axis about 1500 millimeter rapids on the z-axis but I could only get about 800 millimeter rapids on the x so, that was a bit too slow for me. I was hoping to get what was advertised, but I couldn't complain to the seller, obviously. I'm using 120 volts on a 220 volt machine, or 110 volts on a 220 volt machine. Another con? The noise. The control board that runs off of a parallel port was creating a lot of noise in the motors. 
was very uh, loud and dirty sounding. That's the only way I can describe it. It just didn't sound smooth. Another con, pump noise. The pump that came with this is, it works, it pumps, but it is very noisy and annoying. Um, I guess, you know, they must get these pumps for two cents or however much they pay uh, because it seems like they send you the cheapest pump they can possibly get their hands on. Now, it does work, like I said, and, you know, it's functioned for these last three months and there's nothing's went wrong with it, but it just seems really noisy for what it does. Another issue, the table clamp bolts. On the image on eBay, they showed what I thought were T-bolts, so basically a bolt with like a T-head on the end of it that would slide into your slot so that it doesn't turn when you uh, put your wing nut or put your clamp nut on there. This is what they sent. This is an 8 millimeter hex head bolt. Now, while it does slide into the table, it can still turn. You have to hold this when you're tightening down your piece, tightening down your clamp. Um, you know, it does work, but I was a bit disappointed. I actually emailed the seller and mentioned that I didn't get the correct bolts. That, you know, I wanted the T-bolts. I even sent a picture with a big arrow pointing to the bolts that I didn't get that they sent me these instead and he was like oh yeah no problem we'll send them back out so about four days later DHL Express shows up and what do I get? more of these so that was a waste of time they sent me eight millimeter bolts that I could have just went up to the hardware store and bought all the way from China like I don't know. I think that was probably one of my biggest gripes. Just because, you know, I expected to get the actual bolts that were in the picture. No big deal. You still work. Uh, I'll make do. Another con. Um, although most of this was assembled, I went over everything looking for loose bolts. And I did find some. I even took the table apart and found some loose bolts underneath here. Um, so I'd recommend anybody buying this machine, check all your bolts. My last con is this aluminum guard here. Basically just stops material from building up on your lead screws. It's loose. There's a, there's a slot in the back for each of these screws and it's stripped out. It's not uh, a solid piece of aluminum like this, you know, with a hole in it that you could tap. It's actually just a, a slot, and only half the bolt makes contact. Yeah, so basically, this is stripped out behind. I'll get a better shot for you. Alright, so you can see this is the screw right here. There's one on the top and one on the bottom on each side. And it just goes in this, this groove here that's not actually a, a hole. And it just, yeah, not a very good design. Um, I think that with some Teflon tape, it should tighten this up. Uh, obviously, the, the threads aren't very good in this groove. It's, it causes a lot of noise, a lot of vibration when you're cutting. One of the first things I did after I tightened up all my bolts was lubricate everything. This is what I used. It's called Dry Slide and it works great. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description so you guys can check it out. Alright, so let's talk about some of the changes that I made to this. Uh, one of the first things you may know already if you've seen my previous, one of my previous videos. I made a custom dust boot for it. This brush just goes on there. 
two other major modifications that I made to this. I upgraded the power supply to a 48 volt power supply. And I got rid of the motion control card, the parallel port card. And picked up a E-cut USB motion control card. I believe I got it for about $150. I'll put a link to it down in the description so you guys can check it out. When I installed the 48 volt power supply and the USB motion control card, what a difference. I can now easily get 4,000 millimeters a minute rapids. I could actually get 8,000 millimeter a minute rapids. However, I don't think I need 8,000 millimeter a minute rapids. 4,000 is fine for what I do. Um, it's plenty fast. I'm never going to be cutting at that speed. Normally I cut around 2400 millimeters a minute, depending on the bit size and the material, obviously. So here's a look inside the control box. Uh, right here you can see this is the USB motion control card that I have. Uh, the one that I upgraded. This is the 48 volt power supply with the 220 volt switch in case I ever do go to 220 volts. Uh, an interesting thing about the VFD. This is supposedly rated for 220. However, when I plugged it into 120 and measured the output voltage it is actually putting out 220 volts to the spindle. I'm not sure if there's some sort of step-up transformer uh, that converts the voltage, but yeah, so that was excellent as well. I was surprised to see 220 volts coming out of it. Um, yeah, the drivers for the uh, X, Y, and Z axis are JMC 2M542. They handle up to 48 volts. Um, they do micro-stepping. I haven't had any issues with them at all. I don't have any complaints. Uh, they seem to be running fine off 48 volts. I've had jobs run for five, six hours, and they've handled them just fine. In a future video, I'll show how to wire this VFD up to the motion control board so that we can control it from Mach 3. Um, there's a little bit of programming you have to do to the VFD itself. Uh, very simple and uh, I'll actually walk through that as well. Uh, one more thing, the wiring was very very nice. Uh, the wiring inside this box, not what it looks like now, this is my wiring. Uh, a lot of this is, is wiring that I added, but the initial wiring that came um, in this box was very tidy, very neat. I was very impressed actually. Uh, it was not what I expected to open it up and see. Everything was, was wired uh, very well. Everything was wrapped. Um, it's just too bad that they used uh, crappy electronics instead of using something nice like one of these USB control boards. Um, and I, again, the, the, the stepper drivers themselves are fantastic. I have no complaints. Uh, it was just the, the driver board that... And of course, this driver board has you know many more features than like I can have a Hall effect sensor so I can measure the RPM of my spindle, a lot more outputs and inputs as well in case I want to upgrade, um, say if I want to add a potentiometer to control the feed rate, you know, I have that ability to do that now. So that's great. In conclusion, I will just say this. This machine is great. It is a fantastic machine. It's an excellent price. But if you are going to buy one of these machines, I highly recommend that you get a 48 volt power supply and a USB motion control card. In my next video, I'm going to build a spoil board for this. And I'm going to document exactly how I do it and put up a video. So please subscribe if you want to see that. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of projects on this actually. If there's any topic you would like me to cover, with regard to the 6040 or the Chinese CNC machine, um, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message. I'll be more than happy to do it. 
Thanks for watching.